<laughs> That's the rules. Hey, 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 hey. I'm sorry, I'm getting I'm getting upset because YouTube is being weird. Are we here, YouTube? Are we here yet? Okay. Anyways, uh, early chatters on YouTube. What's going on? Lots of people. Basil Peterson. Judy Truett, Rich Diana, Richard Monroe, Human Love Solidarity, Gene, Nazmanavs, uh, Andy the Gardener is unblocked if anybody wants to let him know. I don't know how to let him know, but uh, <laughs> 2022 Electric Boogaloo, okay. Again, though, I, I don't argue with people that don't have any facts. So, Like, I wouldn't argue with a climate change denier necessarily. Necessarily, I might go, I got this. And they'll probably go, no, nah, anyways, I don't have anything, but I'm right anyways. And that's when I say, well, okay. But whatever. People are people. People are people. Hello, per, La per Larson, what's going on? Max RJ. Oh, hey, I want to show you guys something. Um, sorry about the gardener noise. I, I'm trying to eliminate the gardener noise in my life. Um, but nobody else is, so <laughs> my, entire, my entire block is full of gardener noise all the time. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, Max RJ. So Max RJ, um, maybe you guys can see all this. I don't know. Max RJ get, uh, bought some t-shirts and he bought some t-shirts, extra t-shirts to give away to homeless people. And I thought that was really, really cool. And it also was a way to support Black Bear News. And so, Max Sarge, I have to thank you for your purchase of the T-shirts. So I gave them away to some, some homeless folks, or tried, I did, and I did a terrible job. I have to tell you, I did the worst job trying to document me giving away these T-shirts. But just letting you know, I, I tried <laughs> to document it. And that I did actually give these T-shirts away to some homeless folks. So here you go. Um, if it'll play, we'll see if it'll play. I don't know. For whatever reason. Um. So. I gave, gave two t-shirts to these fellows here. I'm just, what, he, they were really appreciative and he, one guy put one on right Somebody away. Somebody donated some shirts to me. So, uh, here. Here you go. It's a large, but it looks like it's your size. Oh, yeah. Lots and lots of homeless people on the beach in California. It's like a thing. Well, there's lots of homeless people, period, in California. It's like a thing. Um, but I tried to give away some T-shirts to some homeless people in my neighborhood. There are homeless people in my neighborhood. And, it, well, this is a funny interaction. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Do you want a shirt? No shirt. You don't want a shirt? No. Oh, okay. Because right. I have so many. You have so many? Okay. Well, that's a good reason. Yeah. Uh, I don't uh, like to keep cards. Somebody like. donated a shirt to me, so. Uh, Thank you. To, you know. All right. All right. I may have found somebody to give away this t-shirt to that somebody wouldn't take the last person. So this lady said, no, I, I have too many shirts. <laughs> I was like, okay, I get it.
I, I'm like that when people try to give me things. I'm like, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Don't give me any things. I'm kind of like that anyways. Whatever. Person wouldn't take the t-shirt. Peace, brother. So the, the last guy I gave the t-shirt to, um, my phone died right when I was giving him the t-shirt. Um, sorry, technology fail right there. But I gave him the t-shirt and he was like, thanks a lot. Um, he really appreciated it. So anyways, Max RJ, I was just showing you that I gave away these t-shirts. Um, Anyways, I need a GoPro bear, bear hat. Yeah. Um, anyways, I, uh, I had a really, a really terrible job of, of documenting, giving away the t-shirts, but I also didn't really want to be up in people's faces with a, you know, I didn't want to be all like, Hey, here I am giving you a t-shirt, huh? You know? let me film you and all that. You know, I try to try to kind of be respectful of people's, you know, privacy, even though, you know, because homeless people have a right to privacy too and a right to not be invaded upon and not be, you know, uh, animals in, a, in, a, in an exhibit, right? You know, like, hey, you're a homeless person. Let me come take pictures of you, right? Whatever. Yes, Black Crow, not a pl bad place to live. If you're going to be homeless, straight up, like, I'm, you know, uh, if you're going to be homeless, be homeless in Southern California or somewhere warm or in Miami or, you know, Florida, like straight up. If you're, if you don't have a home, don't be homeless somewhere cold, <laughs> like go get you a tent, go to Venice beach, go pitch you a tent and go live on Venice beach. I'm telling you right now, it's a place to be. You're right. You right. 16 watching on Rockfin. Let's get more people on Rockfin, please. Oh, yeah, no worries. Max RJ, thank you. Anthony Davis says, I have a BBN t-shirt, and it is awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Um, Obsolete Optics says, bought an economy car in 2017. Now I see I need a big coal rolling diesel sucking pickup truck to increase the global dimming aerosol masking effect. Should I trade it? Should I trade it in when the warranty expires? No, don't get a big diesel sucking pickup truck. Uh, obsolete optics, whatever you do. Um, listen, aerosol masking is, you know, it, it's a worry, but it's actually a low, a lower down on the level of worries, honestly. Um, the way to put out a fire is not to put gasoline on the fire. <laughs> so there you go. There's that. Um, Rich China gas is up in the mitten. Yeah. Gas is up here too. It's like 320 now. I don't, you know, who knows why? Fossil fuel industry is completely, you know, crumbling. And somehow gas is going up. I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's cover it. So we've been talking about We've been talking about this the the situation in Texas uh, for a couple days now. Um, but last night I was, you know, this is I have a lot of friends and family in Texas, and um, uh, last night I, there were a lot of people posting on Facebook and other social media about that. You know, they're uh, they're still without. Uh, power, water, food, people are really having a hard time. People I know, people, you know, my friends and my family that are in Texas are like, 
without power, without water, without food. It's been like days. And they're like, we, and, you know, a lot of people got their power back, but a lot of people are wondering when this is going to, um, a lot of people are wondering when it's going to end, you know? So, uh, it's still continuing. Um, and there's, there's it's going to be kind of a rocky road back because it's still going to be very cold there. Anyways. Yeah. Um, this is continuing the cold is not really abating and it looks like we have something of like a st stuck jet stream. Uh, Poppy Davis natural gas price went up 16,000% for real for our power company. Yeah, there, there are a lot of, um, people burning furniture to stay warm. Yeah. And people, you know, trying, uh, lighting, uh, fires with things they shouldn't inside their houses. Don't do that. Yeah, a lot of a lot of issues going on. Uh, mainly, mainly, you know, as I said yesterday, mainly the fact that Texas isn't uh, optimized for this kind of weather. Even though the last five years, I know that you know Texas has got its fair share of extreme weather events. So um, obviously, you know, there are a lot of things going on as far as like maybe economic reasons or Texas just being cheap or unwilling to connect itself to other power grids or, you know, there's all kinds of issues, all kinds of issues. Um, as far as Texas, not, not keeping its infrastructure, <clears throat> um, up to speed. And then also, I guess they didn't buy, um, you know, they didn't count on needing enough, you know, a certain amount of gas. And so when they tried to go get gas, that, uh, or buy more natural gas, the price of the, they got price gouged basically. Um, Juliet nickel long lines outside of open grocery stores in here in Austin. I imagine. I imagine there are. So lots, lots of reasons for what is going on. And no, it isn't just, it, it isn't just that windmills failed, <laughs> but, um, Jazz Farm, just ask Hannity. Texas's power problem is because of now. Yeah, it's not because of renewables. I mean, it's it's all kinds of factors, but it is mainly because climate change has reared its ugly head. And uh, this is, you know, another um, interesting comment I saw from a friend of mine in Texas. He was like, "Well, this has taught me <clears throat> not to rely on." the people in charge and the infrastructure of your city or your state, I'm going to do some homesteading now. Right. So Poppy Davis, you're already on that road yourself, right? Poppy Davis, the freeze is event is way longer and colder than ever before. That's why not enough winterizing. Right. But you know, the thing is though, is that there are, there have been more frequent freezes in Texas. Um, you know, I've been re in Austin recently when Austin had snow. This was just a couple of years ago. So, again, you know, the th whole thing about we're not used to this, we're Texans, like, it's kind of becoming more of a frequent event. And so now, uh, hopefully, hopefully with this event, t Texans and especially, you know, the people in charge in Texas, the, 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 the legislators, the politicians, and, you know, all those involved in keeping people safe in Texas, like they will understand, hopefully after this event, they will understand, hey, this is this is something that's not just happening once. It's going to keep happening again. So let's take precautions and let's do what's necessary next time. I'm going to talk about that, Gene. Yeah. Jazz Farm says, I think I will try homesteading too. <laughs> good, good on you. Yeah, so, you know, there, there are lots of, lots of issues. Lots of issues. Um, let's look at a few of them. Well, let's, you know, talk about this a little bit. Hundreds of thousands still without power in Texas. Seven million ordered to boil their water as icy weather heads east. 
power was restored to more Texans on Thursday. Um, meanwhile, the Appalachians, northern Maryland, southern Pennsylvania, braced for heavy snow and ice. Little Rock got lots of snow. 320,000 homes and businesses were, were, were without power in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama as well. Um, Tennessee, 12 people were rescued from boats after a dock weighed down by snow and ice collapsed on the Cumberland River on Wednesday night, the Nashville Fire Department said. Uh, in Houston, one family succumbed to carbon monoxide from car exhaust in their garage, right? Don't, don't start your car in your garage. Man, that is really... Uh, it's really very sad. A woman and her three gr grandchildren died in a fire that authorities said might have been caused by a fireplace they were using. Um, yeah, this it's a really, um, really terrible situation. Hundreds of thousands still without power in Texas as new storm hits eastern U.S. Um... Families in Houston and all over Texas were doing anything to stay warm, sometimes making deadly choices. 9-11 calls were up throughout the state. Frozen pipes were bursting, flooding homes and businesses. One Dallas apartment building had icicles inside. So many pi pipes burst. Texas governor asked for help from out-of-state plumbers. A North Texas plumber told CBS Dallas, he, Dallas his company had gotten 2,200 calls in 24 hours. Holy Holy moly. In search for food, there are lines to get into grocery stores that had empty shelves. There was a run on gasoline. Yeah, this is a run on propane. This is a really terrible situation. Um, this is from Kevin Gostola. I know it's hard for people who think America is an ex exceptional to grasp this, but try thinking of how the U.S. can be an exceptional third world country. We have the potential to be the greatest failed state in, in modern history of the world. We are, we are going, getting there as quickly as we can into failed state area. Uh, in Houston, Texas, a line of people filling up buckets of water from a spigot or spigot at Hayden Park. Why millions either have no water or are under a boil water advisory? Um, Biden administration sending generators to Texas. All right, that's, you know, something. Something. Uh, this tweet from... I mean, you know, that's good. They're sending generators to Texas. That's good. A tweet from Bess, the socialist, um, outlining, you know, how shitty people can be liberal or liberal or uh, conservative. Hot take. You should also care about people who live in a red state. Somebody says why they're all racist Nazis. So, you know, this is the upshot of trying to call everybody half the country Nazis is that people think, well, everybody in Texas is a Nazi. So F them. Somebody else says, no, nah, I'm good. Somebody else says we shouldn't care about them because Trump only cared about Texas and Florida and his stands thought it was normal. Again, the assumption that, you know, everybody who lives inside of Texas is, uh, is conservative or a Trump supporter is ridiculous and also ignorant. Um, the, the, thought, the idea that everybody that lives inside California is a Democrat or a Biden supporter, also extremely ignorant. Uh, this, he also goes on to say one of these people has a Black Lives Matter in their, in their bio. if they only understood how many black lives are being impacted in Texas right now. But, you know, we're smarter and all that. Something, something, something. Uh, oh, this is, you know, this came out just today. 
Ted Cruz. Um, that dingleberry on the ass of humanity, Ted Cruz. When Texas was hurting and Texans were freezing and dying and needed Senator Ted, Ted Cruz, he went to Mexico to stay at a resort. Ted Cruz. What a complete jackhole Ted Cruz is. Here's some more uh, pictures from uh, the storm. This is from some inside somebody's home. This Guys, stuff. Um, so this is my house. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Your house just breaks. Everything's flooded. I don't know what's going on. That's really. I and I'm sure that's happening like thousands and thousands and thousands of times over. Um, more thoughts on Texas. The power and water outages in Texas have created a situation that's worse than even the early days of the pandemic. Grocery store, fast food, and gasoline lines are longer than ever. Many stores are closed, including pharmacies. Many vulnerable people can't eat because they can't get electricity or water to cook. Imagine elder, el elderly people who live alone. What, what are they doing in this situation? Can't get on the roads because of the dangerous conditions. At the same time, few organizations are, are actually delivering food and water to people. Some neighborhoods have been without power for two days, while others haven't lost it at all. These blackouts aren't rolling. They're just blackouts without any schedule for when power is coming back on. Uh, we need resources to get essential food and medical supplies to people who can't get to warming centers or relatives houses headed for another deep freeze in san antonio tonight and tomorrow starting another potentially lethal cycle meanwhile potential gouging by energy suppliers hotels and other businesses is occurring throughout the state because of scarcity no price gouging at atb but there's just one shelf from earlier today Uh, somebody else says, I found this interesting. It looks like FEMA services are based on the assessment provided by the state governor. So if Biden declared an emergency, but no one said what they needed, they could possibly just sit there. Uh, oh, and I was reading this from Joaquin Castro, who's a Texas congressman. Um, Again, why is this happening? Weather patterns are getting stuck as climate changes affect the jet stream. So two things are happening. There's a polar vortex. The jet stream is weakening, um, causing, you know, stranger weather patterns. Again, the po polar vortex used to be something that was, uh, or a polar vortex situation used to be something that was a rarity, that was an anomaly. But I, you know, I have a memory, I have memory, and, you know, uh, if memory serves me correctly, and it does, we have had a polar vortex situation, at least in the States, every single winter, uh, for at least the last five or six years straight. And over the last 50, 10 or 15 years, it's happened v numerous times. So now it's not an anomaly anymore, it's going to happen every single year, so Anywhere, anywhere in the country, whether you're in Southern California or Texas or Louisiana, uh, Florida, every single year is the possibility that this is going to happen. So, you know, no, no, no state, no country, no city, uh, no state, no county, no city in this country should ever claim that, like, you know, we didn't see this company coming or this doesn't ever happen to us or we, you know. 
if people are addressing and assessing climate change correctly, and they, you know, there's plenty of information out there, and every state government knows about climate change or should know about climate change, um, should be the correct way to assess this is this can happen to us anytime, any year. So, you know, you can't just sit there and go, I don't know. I remember in Georgia a couple of years ago, um, there was a cold snap and a bunch of people, uh, I mean, the whole city of Atlanta shut down. This is like, I don't know, five or six years ago. And it was absolute mayhem. And again, the whole, you know, we don't, I don't, we never, this doesn't happen. All right. I was, I've been in Georgia, Atlanta many times where it's snowing and they have ice and it gets cold. And now with climate change, you should know in Atlanta, Georgia, any, any winter, any, any year, any time is, is the right time for ice and snow to completely debilitate your city. So don't ever. You shouldn't ever, that shouldn't ever come out of your mouth. We didn't, we don't ever experience this. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking to the people of those cities or that state. I'm talking to the people that run those cities in that state. Texas, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana, Alabama, anywhere. All of you should understand. You should never, that should never come out of your, ho- your mouth ever. Um, anyways, Rockfin, we got 23 people watching. That's amazing. Thanks for hanging out with me on Rockfin, guys. Black Crow says, suddenly prepping doesn't seem so weird, eh? Yeah, mm mm-hmm. Right. And I'm seeing a lot of a lot of, you know, a lot of people on Facebook are like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we should have, you know, go bags or maybe we should have supplies somewhere or maybe we should have some kind of way to keep ourselves alive when the grid goes down. Right. J Thadcast, adaption retrofit homesteaders, right? Um, last thing I wanted to cover today, I didn't want to go too long. Uh, and you know, this isn't, you know, I've been covering the, the human, the effects on humans. Um, but of course, uh, plant life, animal life being affected negatively. Um, volunteers in Texas are saving thousands of cold, stunned sea turtles from the storm. This is from yesterday. And, you know, this is just one animal that's being affected. There are, you know, many animals being affected. Um, Native species of plants and animals that are being affected by the storm, of course, that's going to create um, chaos in the ecosystem as well. Volunteers in coastal Texas have rescued thousands of sea turtles from frigid waters and shores during the historic winter storm and are working creatively to house them as much of the region remains without power. Sea Turtle Inc., a nonprofit education, rehabilitation, and conservation organization in South Padre Island, Texas, has taken in nearly 4,500 sea turtles since Sunday, according to Executive Director Wendy Knight. She told NPR that local volunteers have been retrieving the turtles by boat and on foot and that the organization has been able to accommodate them 
with assistance from the community, including from the local government and SpaceX, which has a launch site nearby. The love and support of people who just want to help things that can't get themselves, they can't, that can't help things that can't help themselves is overwhelming, Knight said. As of Wednesday morning, Knight said the floor of Sea Turtle Inc.'s facility was covered in bins containing some 500 re rescues. The city's convention and visitors bureau donated the use of the South Padre Island Convention Center, which Knight said is currently housing the other approximately 4,000 in a combination of tarps, kiddie pools, and boxes lined up tip to toe. And you can see this here. Wow. Good on them for, for saving these turtles. The persistent cold temperatures mean more turtles will likely arrive throughout the day, prompting the need to spill over into a third storage facility, according to Knight. And with more bad weather on the way, she estimates the first turtles are ready to return to the water won't be released until Saturday. The cold-blooded creatures are particularly vulnerable to the extreme weather since they are unable to regulate their own body temperature. When water temperatures drop below approximately 50 degrees, sea turtles remain awake but lose the ability to move, a condition called cold stun that often leads to death by injury, stranding, or drowning. The five species of sea turtle found in Texas are all considered either threatened or endangered, according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Knight, Knight called this week the Armageddon of Cold Stuns, noting that while the group prepares for cold stuns annually, it does not typically expect to be without power at the same time. We have exacerbated a once-in-a-few-decades experience by a holdback of the power grid and a holdback of our electric support, she said. The facility is permanently home to five sea turtles that are not fit to be released into the wild, including one with a prosthetic fin and was also housing some 35 sick or injured turtles when the power went out at 2 a.m. on Sunday, according to Knight. The water in the tanks began to cool, and she said it has been an uphill battle trying to keep the sea turtles alive while waiting for power to be restored. And that's not including the thousands of turtles that have been rescued since. <clears throat> Climate change will affect everything, everyone and everything. And humans, you know, are, are probably the most likely to be able to help themselves and adapt. Animals and plants, not so much. Look at those guys. All right. The Salt Laker says, get a tougher shell, sea turtle. I, you're joking, of course. American flag. Yeah. Poppy Davis says, I'm cold stunned too. Um, Gin Pi Gamma says, save your plastic to make insulation. Good tip. Good adaptation tip. Um, all right, guys. Summon number five says consume. <laughs> Abel Trencherman, how you doing? All right, guys. That does it about uh, for this particular show. Um, thank you all f for hanging out with me today. And talking about the situation in Texas. Um, 
I'm going to be doing a neorealism uh, live stream on Rockfin exclusively in about 20 minutes. So if you want to join me over there and we'll talk about some political issues, we will do that. Until next time, peace. <laughs>